If you absolutely cannot stand Candace Owens, rejoice, because her career is about to be ruined, all thanks to the Prophet Muhammad. A little background first. Candace Owens recently got upset again, this time because Harry Styles likes to put on high heels, suspendies, and a bra, just like a lumberjack. And what could be manlier than a lumberjack? But Candace Owens declared war on lumberjacks everywhere when she tweeted, There is no society that can survive without strong men. The East knows this. In the West, the study feminization of our men at the same time that Marxism is being taught to our children is not a coincidence. It is an outright attack. Bring back manly men. Fortunately for RuPaul fans everywhere, MSNBC stepped in to let everyone know that lumberjacks aren't the only manly men who like to wear dresses. Liz Plank wrote an article titled, Candace Owens mocks Harry Styles for wearing a dress. Did she forget about Jesus? Liz Plank then gives a list of manly men who were known for wearing dresses. The first dress-wearing man on the list is, of course, Jesus. Plank writes, Let's start with a classic manly man. That's right, the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. According to historians, he wore a thin, one-piece, knee-length cloth tunic called a kitone, was a common undergarment, should be which was a common undergarment, for most men at the time. But because of his focus on income redistribution and helping the poor, another concept known for making Owens gasp, it makes sense. It makes sense? Are all of MSNBC's editors busy rioting? It makes sense that he wouldn't dress like the wealthier men of his time who wore fuller length tunics. If Owens wants to live in a fantasy world in which men have always and exclusively worn pants, I wouldn't recommend she visit anyone in ancient Greece or Rome where tunics were a hit with men. This has got to be one of the stupidest articles in all of history. Yes, men dressed differently in first century Israel, but Jesus wore men's clothing. He wore what men wore in first century Israel. Harry Styles is not wearing men's clothing. So how is Jesus supposed to be a refutation of Candace Owens? And the same is true for everyone else on MSNBC's list of men wearing dresses. They're not wearing dresses. Hercules, King Henry VIII, Gandalf, every Supreme Court judge ever. Judges' robes are not women's garments. Harry Styles wears women's garments. Now, for the record, I couldn't conceivably care less what Harry Styles wears. Until John McRae posted a video about this, I didn't know who Harry Styles was. When I heard his name, I thought he was part of the royal family. But the point Candace Owens is making isn't that some guy is putting on dresses. It's that the culture is celebrating and promoting the feminization of men. The people responding to her are claiming that there's nothing feminine about prancing around in women's clothing. But pointing to Jesus here just doesn't make that point. Luckily for MSNBC, it's David Wood to the rescue. MSNBC couldn't come up with a single manly man who wore women's clothing. But I can think of two. Exhibit A. This is the manliest man on the planet, and he's wearing his wife's nightie. Why? Because he'll do just about anything to make a point about Exhibit B, the manliest caravan robber and slave trader in 7th century Arabia. This is Sahil Bukhari, number 2442, in the Aisha Buley translation. I'll post a link to the complete hadith in the description box in case you'd like to read it. In this passage, Muhammad's nine wives are feuding with each other because his favorite wife, his child bride Aisha, is getting special privileges. She's receiving more gifts than the other wives. So some of these disgruntled wives get together and decide to ask Muhammad for equal treatment. Here's Muhammad's response. Do not injure me regarding Aisha. The revelation does not come to me when I am in the garment of any woman except Aisha. Did you catch that? 
the revelation, Quranic revelation, does not come to me when I am in the garment of any woman except Aisha. In other words, don't complain about Aisha. Allah gives me revelations when I'm wearing Aisha's garments, but not when I'm wearing your garments. So Allah obviously favors Aisha over the rest of you. Now stop asking for equal treatment. The Muslim sources contain more than 30 references to Muhammad wearing women's clothing. I'll include a link to a bunch of examples in the description box. This narration in Bukhari uses the Arabic word thalb, which is like our word garment in that it can refer to a man's garment or to a woman's garment. But in context, it's the thalb of Aisha that Muhammad is wearing. Some of the sources, however, including Sahih Muslim, say that Muhammad was in Aisha's mert, which refers specifically to a woman's garment, more like our word dress. Now think about this. Muhammad had a child bride named Aisha. He had more wives than his own revelations allow. The Quran allows men to marry up to four women and girls. Muhammad had at least nine wives at one time. Muhammad didn't treat his wives equally. Muhammad liked dressing up in women's clothing. He received revelations while he was wearing his child bride's garment. And he used the fact that he received revelations while he was wearing Aisha's garment as justification for giving her a special status over his other wives. So, Muhammad, like Harry Styles, was a cross-dresser. But MSNBC won't put Muhammad on the list of men who wore dresses. Why is that? Why would MSNBC claim that Jesus wore women's clothing when he didn't, but not claim that Muhammad wore women's clothing when he did? There's only one possible explanation. According to MSNBC, Muhammad wasn't manly enough to be on the same list as Jesus. Why does MSNBC view Muhammad as unmanly? Easy. MSNBC is staffed entirely with racist, Islamophobic, hate-mongering bigots. But those of us who aren't racist, Islamophobic, hate-mongering bigots know that Muhammad was manly. That manly man received revelations while prancing around in his child bride's nighty. Just doesn't get any manlier than that. Well, Candace Owens has officially been destroyed by the Prophet Muhammad. You're welcome, MSNBC. As for the rest of you, if you're starting to think that Muhammad sounds like a really weird, creepy dude, you ain't seen nothing yet. Be sure to check out my video, The Top 5 Most Disgusting Facts About Prophet Muhammad. When you're finished vomiting, go ahead and watch Muhammad, the white prophet with black slaves. Because let's face it, some of you didn't believe me when I said that Muhammad was a slave trader.